So recently, Professor Bowley showed us log tables, how in the good old days, he used to use books like this to do big calculations. I'd suggest having a look at the video before watching this one if you need to get up to speed. But at the end of the last one, we promised we'd talk about how these tables were created. Now the log tables we were looking at were in base 10. All numbers were sort of converted to a power of 10. But that's not how the first tables were created. That's what we're going to explain now. It's some pretty hardcore number crunching at times, but it is amazing to think all those years ago, people were doing that kind of work to pave the way for the scientists and mathematicians in the years to come. Now you're going to ask the question, where do these numbers come from? How did I make up tables of antilogarithms and logarithms? And this was done by a man called John Napier in the period between 1594 and 1614. This is before calculus, before Newton's works, before Leibniz, before Gauss, all these great mathematicians. He was the one who did the first bit, which was to work out this new function, the logarithm. And although I've told you about logarithms to the base 10, you could do logarithms to whatever number. It doesn't have to be 10 to the power, it could be 3 to the power or 5 to the power or whatever you want, or 0.3 to the power. So I'm going to make up a number and show you the method used by John Napier so you can follow the logic. But I'm not going to ask you to take 20 years, which is what he took, in order to create the table. I'm going to make a very short, abbreviated table. The number I am going to use, which I'll call A, is a very strange number. It's 1 minus 0.1 to the power of 10. That's our base, is it? That's going to be the base. And it makes the calculation as easy as possible. And I'll try to explain why. So now I, I want to work out this number to the power of 0.1. Now 0.1 is different from 1 and 2 and 3 because it's got a decimal point. And once you've understood that you can get decimal points out of this, you can see how you can build up a longer table. And this is 1 minus 0.1 to the 10 to the power of 0.1, which is 1 minus 0.1, 10 times 0.1 is 1. So this is 0 0.9. 0 0.9 is this number, this exponent, to the power of 0.1. If I were to do this again and put in 0.2 to the power of 10 times 0.2, which is 1 minus 0.1, the power of 2. And now I have a choice here. I'm going to use this result, 0 0.9 into 1 minus 0 0.1 equals 0 0.9 minus 0 0.09 equals 0 0.81. So I've got the next one. And you see I'm doing it all the time by subtracting this from that. This is, a, this is tedious. Oh. Yeah, he took 20 years over this, and he used a much larger number than this. I'll just do one more. 0.81 minus 0.081 equals 0.729. And it goes on and on and on. This is working out things which I can put in a table. So this is just the same as I was explaining when doing the log tables. This is just to a different base. Now, Napier used the number... 1 minus 1 over 10 to the 7 to the power of 10 to the 7. That was his base? That was the one he used over a long period to get his accurately as possible. So he was using this process, but with a more complicated number. Those tables you were using as a boy in school were base 10. What's going on here? Oh, there was a man called Briggs who worked out that if you calculated it to the base E or to, to this base, you could convert it to base 10. And that solved the product much more easily because people are used to dealing with base 10. And there's a simple transformation. Once you've got one function, the exponential function rising up, or any number to some power rising up, you can convert to base 10. And that's what Briggs did, and that helped solve the product. So Napier did all the donkey work. Briggs came in and got all the glory at the end. If you go through this algebra and you get to really long numbers, you have problems because, first of all, if I get eight decimal places and have to subtract off another eight, I'm bound to make mistakes. And people did make mistakes. And also, if you get up to 10 to the 7 decimal places, 
you really ought to be truncating at some point because you can't do the sums. And so there were errors introduced because people were doing subtraction all the time. And so one of the great problems was to remove all the errors from the tables because if you're an astronomer and you were relying on all these things to get accurate measurements and accurate calculations of what you should see, it might disagree with the experiment, not because of the experiment and the theory not working, but because the, the calculations are wrong based on these tables. And so somebody called Babbage tried to invent a difference engine to try and remove all the errors in all the mathematical tables and couldn't do it.